Hello? Okay, let's start. Um, I will talk today about the Python packaging Messi. And this is me, I'm Daniel Garcia. You can find me at this email and these usernames in different platforms. So if you find that I break something, you can blame me. So let's start. Uh, what is a Python package? I, I, I will talk about real Python packages, not R RPM. And maybe later about RPM, but not too much. So what it is, or, or yeah, or what, what we have here. We have the, one of the good things about Python is a interpreted language. So you have the, the code and you don't need to compile for different platforms. You just uh, put the Python code there and run in, in everywhere. That's not true, but is, is the idea. It's al almost true. So if you have an interpreter, you can run. Or hopefully it will work. So a Python package right now is just a zip file with all the code inside. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's simple because you don't need to compile anything. You don't need architecture. So if you have Python code, you can just create a zip, a zip file and put it somewhere. And the people can download and just unzip and add to their Python path. And it's, it, it's a work. It's, it's simple. What do you need more? Yes, we need more because you may know it's, it's not that simple. So we, we need the metadata, we need the versions to be able to update or to know what it, what it's running. You, you have the dependencies that is really nice to be able to build something bigger, but it's a nightmare. And yes, at the end you have interpreted code, but not all the Python is just Python. You have C libraries, you have dependencies on uh, binary code, so some Python modules don't work everywhere. You need to have uh, different packages for different architecture. And yeah, about about one important thing about the, the packaging is how to distribute that. So you need trusted repositories or some way to download because if you download the Python code from a random website, it, it could be anything. So this is something that we have in all the Linux distribution, but some languages has their own thing to distribute uh, code. So when we are talking about Python, Python has their, their own uh, packaging system and distribution, but why, why uh, there are a lot of people working on packaging before Python started to create this, but why not use something that exists? But I don't know the reason, I, I was not there, but I think that we all, all, almost everyone that works on software has done that. There is something, but I don't like it, I, I will do better. So, and this is free software, so it's about choice. So I can do myself the thing and and do better. So that, that's partly true, it's not true, but um, that is it. Um, if they could use RPM, it, maybe things could be easier for us or, or maybe harder. But the thing is that it's, it's a packaging system, so it's very similar. So you can maybe translate one to one. But let's, let's go about the history so to understand what we have right now and what you have seen or will see in different Python modules. So at the beginning, in the beginning we have these utils. Um, these utils was the first, uh, the first way to 
official way to build Python packages, and it was part, or it is part of the Python uh, interpreter. It's in the it's in the main library, the standard library. For now, <laughs> it's deprecated right now, but is 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 what we have. Uh, the problem with this solution is that it's because it's in the Python standard library is is coupled with the Python version, so it's not easy to update. You need to do with the Python interpreter is more stable or should be. Uh, with this, we have an introduction of setup. P that is something that is everywhere today and. People are removing it, but it, it, it's everywhere. And the requirement thing that is not a standard, but it's a way to uh, handle dependencies. And the way to install packages with this, running a script. It's a Python script at the end. And it just does the packaging thing, just um, copy all, all the code in, in a folder and, and create and install in different places depending on on, on extension and all the thing. So we can build RPM directly with this. So this is cool. It's, it's nice, but it has some problems. So uh, the next step uh, is uh, set up tools that came later to solve some of these problems. So setup tools is an external tool, so it's not coupled anymore with, with the interpreter, so it, it could uh, be updated faster and do uh, more crazy things. And at the beginning, was just something on top of these utils, but right now it just replaced. Um, and does basically the same, but extends. It adds the ability to, to, to add requirements, to add dependencies inside the setup file. So you don't need the requirements thing. You have in the same uh, build the, the dependencies. So during building, you can handle dependencies or during install. And uh, the we have the uh, the dot uh, egg uh, file format that is basically what I said a, a zip file with the metadata and and the and the code and at the beginning the the egg files uh, can be installed just putting the zip file in 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 the Python path in some place and just adding this uh, to the path. So you don't, you, you don't no, not uh, uncompress that. You, you, can, you use directly the, the code from, you import the, the egg file. So it's, it, the, the unzip is done at runtime. That is good for Python because it's fast. <laughs> so you don't have performance problems. And after that, we have the the will that is is basically the same, but uh, an extension or or a new a new version. So uh, the the way the the old way of installing and building Python packages is using the setup.p. So you run uh, setup.p build or set up the p install that is deprecated and you shouldn't use that anymore it has some problem the, i think that the main problem is that it's a python script so you can't put any code inside there and it's not good to it's it's not something uh, really able to to run random code building the the packages or installing so Right now, for building and for building packages and installing, you should use pip. 
that uh, has the same functionality and, and something uh, more standard. And it's able to create the, the wheel, packages instead there. And yeah, there, the, I, I have a, a, a comparison here. So we can see the difference between X and wheels. So it's it's very similar, but try to improve to to remove the problems from one side to 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 the other. So uh, both of them add zip files with metadata in different folders. In in egg you can find in egg info, and in wheel you have the this info. And yeah, the even the name of the packages has metadata because it has. Uh, format it's the name the version the python version the platform it's in the name of the, of the package and the, the there is another difference that the egg file uh, has inside the the python compile code and the will uh, so only have the sources and it compiles at, at install time So right now the, the modern packages are will. All packages are egg. And then we have the the new the new format trying to standardize this and open the way to build uh, Python packages to external tools, to, to more external tools. So we have the the pipe project uh, tom file definition. So instead of adding the metadata to a Python script, that is the setup.p, uh, you have the metadata in a uh, TOML uh, file. And yeah, it's, it's a standard, or try to be a standard. Uh, there are different tools. You can use different tools to build and to install. Uh, not to install, not to install, you should use pip and even to build, but pip rely on external library to build. So we have now set up tools, fleet, poetry, and a lot of things to build, not just set up tools. So if you are building Python packages, uh, now you, you need to care about more dependencies to be able to build the packages, because before you just need set up tools, almost always. And now it's, it's, there are more more things uh, to consider. We have some metadata, and it is extensible, so tools can add their own metadata in, in this file. So that's the, that is something that's good, but uh, it opens the door for every tool <laughs> creating their own metadata. So every tool does the same thing with a different name. So it's 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 harder for find a standard way to do the things. And what about the future? This is a, a brief history about this. So now we know why we have some uh, some Python uh, modules that had a setup build, some some that doesn't have that and have a pipe project, some that has the requirements file, uh, other doesn't have that. And have different dependencies for building, but what about the future? So uh, this utils is deprecated and will be removed in the next Python release. So if someone is using this util, uh, uh, he will done. But you can continue using because this util is inside set of tools, so you can just rely on the external module and continue using that. Um, and, and yeah, the, the future is uh, the, the pipe project TOML, and tools are building and doing different things on top of that. So I think that in the future, there will be more standardization inside the, that file, because now tools are adding their custom things to do uh, more things than just packaging, and maybe uh, some of these things will go to the standard, just to use the same name for for everyone. 
and now have different configuration name like uh, test dependencies and other tool use depth dependencies and other tool use uh, extra dependencies. So a standard way to define uh, some specific case that are common. So I, I have been talking about creating these um, the packages, um, but there, there is not much about how the Python packages uh, does the dependency tracking and and all the thing. So it's uh, in in the as I say in these utils there there is no way to specify dependencies. You have an external file requirements with all the dependencies and and that's all. And and. And then in, in, with, with setup tools, you have a way to define dependencies. But a lot of people continue using the requirements because it's a standard, and there are people using different names for requirements. So you have uh, requirements, depth requirement, doc requirements, uh, and, and different kind of files or metadata that is, is not a standard, or but different projects use different ways of defining and uh, handling uh, dependencies. And now with PyProject, it's easier to add this metadata into the into this file. But there is, there is a standard way to define dependencies, for, but tools has the ability to add their own configuration. So tools are using different names. So, so um, that's the thing. The dependencies, uh, dependencies tracking in Python is is something that is uh, is done at its null time with pip uh, because when you build the package, you have the metadata and it's everything is there. But before building the package, you have in the in the source you have different ways to define the dependencies. So when we talk about RPM. It it could be really easy to just translate from a Python package to an RPM, and even we have we have some tools to do that. In, uh, at SUSE, we we don't do that automatically, but we have some tools, so you can get a Python package, uh, a will, or not a will, the, the source, and just translate. To a RPM, really, it's really simple. We share even the similar, uh, or we try to use the same name just with Python uh, prefix, so you can even translate. But it's, it, as I say, it, it's not always that simple. So it it, it requires some review. So right now to build packages, uh, we just get the source from trying to get the the, the Python packaging uh, index from the repository. If we need something more, we we go for for the source where it, where it, where it is in GitHub or where, wherever it is, because sometimes we we run tests and we, the tests are, are not part of. The distribution, so you you need to to get the source with more data. Um, we handle dependencies with RPM, so we need to translate the dependencies in that project to RPM dependencies and handle missing dependencies. So so yes, that that's the thing. Python is a is a language that. Uh, Grow a lot, and it's really easy to depend on the, uh, half of the internet to just uh, do something really simple. So, when you add a dependency, or when the developers add dependencies, uh, it's really easy to don't think about the overload. So, you add a dependency to do something really simple, and when we try to add to to RPM to to SUSE, we end up with. 30 new packages, or 30 or more. 
So we have some macros to be able to build because of this history that I that I have been talking about. So there are different ways and, and different modules are faster than others. So they there are, we have uh, models that use setup tools and other that use uh, these utils. So we have some macros that does the installation and the build process, trying to 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 be to be uh, uh, more simple. So we do not need to care about uh, all the things. And yeah, we have the by project uh, version of the macros to to handle dig this. And in, in the Python packages, the, the check part is really important because it's, it's a dynamic language, so you, it's really easy to do not detect uh, incompatibility problems between dependencies. So you need to, or you have to run test at some point because you can update and maybe this with the new dependencies is not, it's, it's not working, but you, you cannot detect because you are not building anything. You just have the, the source code. And we have the multi-build uh, thing in Tumbleweed. We build every package for three, three versions of Python. Right now, 3.9, 3.10, and 3.11. And this is, on, this is done with this macro, so. Yep. For the package, is the same? Yeah. What, what's what's the difference and why do we need to it's build it, it three times? It is, what do we build? It's exact, it's not always the same. But it could be the same, but we build different packages to be able to install. Uh it's it's the files are not in the same place. We have for Python 3.9, we have the files under the 3.9 namespace. So you don't have a collision. If you use it's using 3.9. You install the 3.9 and not the 3.10 thing. It's because we compile as PYCs, and, and PYCs are linked to the Python version that they run against. Uh, so you can't take a PYC for Python 3.9 and use it for 3.11. It will then get rebuilt. That's that's why we include them in there, and that's why we're we're doing it this way. Yeah, and a lot of uh, Python packages are not just Python. There is a lot of C code. So it's not that simple, as always. And if I may add one more comment, uh, these two sets of uh, systems of building, uh, Python build and Python install versus py, py project wheel and PyProject install, they are not uh, the same in the sense that uh, the the first one is being heavily deprecated because it stopped working with Python 3.12, which is now in alpha, so we really should, and we have like <laughs> thousands of them, so we have to re really do something about it and to convert from one from the other. Uh, basically for you, please don't use the first one if you can. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. With Python 3.12, we will have a lot of packages broken because of using the this utils thing. So I have another question. So the bytecode actually builds blastingly fast. Why don't we build the bytecode at install time and the post install? I don't know. I don't know if <laughs> So, uh, why don't we so at a post install? install? No, no, the, the, the PYCs are built blastingly fast or if you install the sources. Blastingly fast is not fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, we, are, we are running test. We are running test. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we have, this is what we're doing, and um, this is what we are facing every day. Uh, 
Um, I have been talking about this. The, the Python is a dynamic language, and um, yeah, some people doesn't like too much to keep the API stable. And even when uh, library developers keep the API stable, other developers uh, like to use internal things. And in Python, you don't have an isolation, isolation thing. You can use a library and go deep and use some internal, th internal thing. And if the developer change and keep the, the, the public API, maybe it break, break your, your code because you are doing crazy things. It's, it's hard to detect incompatibilities because it's an interpreter, so, it's, uh, so if you don't run the code, you don't detect the problem. So that's why the tests are really important here. And yes, the, the thing that I said before, the dependencies um, thing, is, it, it's, it's a problem. It's not that bad that uh, JavaScript, but we are trying to, to achieve that, <laughs> that thing. I mean, the, the, it, when it's easy to get a new dependency, it's really simple, or it's really easy to that your project grow a lot in independencies because when it's simpler to just add this dependency and uh, it, it downloads from the internet, wherever, and it works, it's simpler than go to the standard library and try to understand the, the API and write 10 lines of code if you can import a module and write one. So, so that's the thing. Maybe one package. Uh, if, if you want to add one package to, to, to OBS, you end with 30 or more. And we need to maintain that. So there are a lot of Python packages. And when some, some packages change, there is a dependency chain and everything is broken. So we need to go one by one fixing and reporting upstream that you are doing wrong. So, um, we have been talking about Python and RPM, so I will talk a bit about something that we are working on, trying to solve all the problems that the people have in the world. So we call this the Python stack proposal, and it's not something really big, but I hope that <coughs> it's something good. So the Python stack proposal is, uh, just uh, uh, try, uh, we are trying to solve the problem that we have with SLE and all Python packages version and people relying on all Python interpreter and all version. And we want to provide a new interpreter and a new set of modules on SLE with all the support, but with modern uh, a modern version, so you can use a modern Python. This is not a replacement of anything. And the, the Python 3.6 is continuing to be the, the main Python interpreter, and libraries are, are there, nothing changed. But we are building uh, the new version of the Python 3.11 and a reduce, not to reduce now, but a reduced list of Python <coughs> packages that are the newer version. I mean, right now the version that we have untumbled with, but it will be stable in time. So we are taking the, that the version right now to provide uh, a new version. This is going to the Python module for SLE, and as I say, it will be supported at least until uh, 2027. And the, the Python modules won't change like it, it changed and tampered with. It, it will be more stable. We will keep, we'll try to keep the, the Python stable, the Python modules stable, but we can update this. It's really difficult to backport uh, fixes or something. Yep. 
Just two bitchy comments from uh, somebody who spent too much time with this. <laughs> um, first one is, um, we do not, this is not a slee. Uh, uh, well, it's not the same as the base slee. So the, we do not guarantee, we will try to be stable and keep it uh, stable as much as possible. But this is not like the slee that it will be forever and forever and forever the same version. So uh, anything can change. We will try to be very reasonable about it and change when, when necessary, but it is not guaranteed API forever. That's the first one. And the second, I will be really nasty if you want to add a <laughs> new module to, the, to that restricted uh, reduced list. So I want uh, Jira <laughs> tickets, business reasons, all the, <laughs> all the crap. So yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, how many packages that we have right now. Uh, less than 600, yeah. but we started with, let for, with 200, we started with 200, but need to add dependency and dependencies. So it's, it's, it's a never ending thing. So to add a new thing, we require to, <laughs> to add a lot of things. And we need to, to stop at some point because we want to provide, we want to support this. And so it's, if it's bigger and bigger and bigger, it's be, it will be a lot of more work. So we try to not, we try to not have tumbleweed <laughs> here because it will be a little more complicated, but to provide some basic thing to be able to build on top of this and to modernize the, the tools without breaking the, the base system. So um, that is all that I have. So if you want to ask anything, it's the end. <laughs> this is the end. Are there are there efforts to to take um, upstream dependencies instead of redoing this, or even even taking whole whole packages? So for example, in factory at least, just hit the button and we have. Python 3 dot whatever with a whole bunch of packages, just like that? I don't understand the question. Yeah, just, I mean, there are, um, with pip you have all the, the requirements and the dependencies, and we are redoing this with RPM, right? Yeah, yeah, we are translating from. So I could imagine kind of source service or whatever, which where the package is going to be fetched and an RPM is going to be built it's not that simple to convert. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's not that simple. My question is, are there efforts? The simple answer is no. Yeah. And so if you can elaborate, I can elaborate. Uh, speaking as a member of the Python team, though, if you want to add something to reduce stack, we do accept uh, non-sequential unmarked fills. Concerning the uh, question, um, concerning the question, uh, there are always uh, somebody comes with a great idea that we would just uh, re uh, replace all our work with uh, just automatically pull down everything yeah. from paper and everything will be awesome, nice uh, and uh, shiny. Uh, it won't. Uh, point A, um, we are actually SUSE and we are selling some support to, to people. So we are supposed to guarantee that it actually works. And, uh, and also PyPy's uptime is 99.6. That's the <laughs> other one. <laughs> but uh, the first one, you wouldn't believe how much the Python developers haven't absorbed the idea of a stable API. <laughs> That's just a weird thing. So or solving, it, or solving it with vendoring. Just, just include your dependency in your package. And it, and it just no, works. just put in your requirement lists less than something and the, everything will be shiny. Yeah. So uh, it just doesn't work this way. Uh, currently, we are battling with URLlib3, which is foundation for requests, which is used by like half of uh, all Python packages, which lost, uh, uh, which lost the compatibility with the older versions. And 
it's horrible. So no, I, I will never ever allow or sign up on uh, just use paper and everything will be uh, shiny. It won't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have a question, especially for the for the sleeve part of the yep. Python uh, 3.11. So what's the actual business case of including any Python module? I mean, if you only include 600, then, then uh, which which is there a customer that's happy with just having the 600, or are they just going to vendor everything they need on top anyway? So why why do it? Don't we ask them to vendor all of them? Um, we were working extensively both with uh, our external customers and with internal use. So, for example, there is cloud team who uses Python very much. And uh, we were communicating with them what, what is the list uh, they require. And I don't know, Ericsson and uh, so, so, so some other customers we were talking with what uh, they need from us. So it's kind of that was the process how we developed that, that list. Yeah, we try, we try to create a list of basic packages that <laughs> most of the people want, but you, you you need to cut at some point. You you cannot add any any dependency that everyone has. Yeah. So so, so what's what's the actual support we promise for those Python packages? Is it like we we will pull bug fixes from the internet, or do we develop we basically promise to maintain even upstream unmaintained modules? Okay. Actually, to answer Rich's question, there is another very important reason, and these are other packages that are not native Python packages, but which yeah. have Python requirements, and so they create dependencies. And in order to build them in the build system and, and ship them, you actually need to provide the, these dependencies. <laughs> so regarding this um, stack proposal for SP4, could you maybe share a little on how that would relate to what SLEEBCI provides and maybe any kind of update on what kind of Python um, to be expected with ALP? I don't know. <laughs> so, HPC uh, meaning uh, like uh, scientific uh, stuff, our uh, high performance, uh, we are not including any, I'm not sure whether we have um, math, uh, math by, no, NumPy, uh, that's probably as far as we are in, in the scientific yeah. stack, uh, as much we include. So. We haven't put uh, the big ones like SciPy, uh, Pandas, and uh, stuff like that. It's not in the reduced stack. We may eventually add it in uh, next uh, service packs because it is a lot of work uh, to, to make it work. So mm. it may have, uh, come eventually, but uh, yeah, it's not, uh, there is almost not, nothing there now. That's the first one. What was the second question? So let me. Yeah. Oh, and some data images. Uh, and out, uh, not, not in the Python stack proposal. It was uh, outside of the scope of the proposal. Yeah, so I can, I can answer the DBCI question. So I think you were asking how that compares. It doesn't compare. So there is a very short answer. So in CBCI, we offer uh, the Python interpreter, so everything pip, uh, so pip and the C Python interpreter um, in a, sorry? Yeah, and I, I wanted to leave out setup tools because otherwise I get comments <laughs> of the room. Well, whatever you know from me, it's up to you, of course. Yeah, so, so these, these containers are used, uh, intended to be used uh, just with pip, right? so they are, they, they're not in. You can install RPMs. Uh, the SleepBCI repository inside provides some Python packages, um, but not a lot. Right? Um, you only actually get 3.6. Um, it's actually interesting what we will do with the Python stack reduced module, whether we provide that in SleepBCI. I think that's something that we haven't actually 
decided on. I mean, it just needs to be added to the BCI uh, repository, uh, the embedded repository. But that's that's a discussion to, to be had, right? We didn't decide on that. And I think the second question you had was answered, I don't already forgot. Uh, uh, ah, I'll plan. Yeah, the I'll plan was. Uh, well, yeah, so I, I wanted to answer that. So uh, I'll currently, the DA code base has 3.10 and 3.11. Uh, so 3.10, uh, because it's the main version or the primary version in Tumbleweed, and it just inherited Tumbleweed. Um, and there's a written or unwritten rule in the Python team to only ever use the even versions as primary interpreter. It's so very much unwritten rule. <laughs> <laughs> the people break it, uh, we lose it. Yeah. So, and 3.12 will be painful. So, which version? Yeah, to be decided, I think. So. <laughs> so no, Python will be on the host, but it will live in its own namespace. So that decision has been made. So we will move the Python that we use for internal tools that are developed at SUSE somewhere else so it does not interfere with what users use. So if a user wants to install their own Python on, on the host, they can do that. They can install whatever modules they want. Can, they can use pip as they see fit. And none of that will interfere in ALP with what we built. So that has been separated. That decision has been made, but not implemented yet. <laughs> and if I understand correctly, and that I'm not sure whether I understand correctly, there is no guaranteed version on the host. So we will use for, for whatever we need. And then later we decide we, we want to change. Correct. We, we can move our stuff as we see fit. So when 3.12 comes out or 3.14 and internally we decide we're going to switch to that interpreter, we have not made any promises to the customer that that will be supported forever until the earth turns to dust. So that goes away. Yeah.